In today's video I show you how a frozen shoulder can look on MRI. So let me just give you a quick repetition of how the anatomy normally looks like. And this is a MR arthrography and we can see we have this nice axillary pouch, very thin joint capsule here, you can see here the posterior portion, then here the anterior portion, so it's a thin joint capsule nicely distended here. And this is a T1 sagittal and you can see first of all the coracoid here. This is the base of the coracoid process and all everything here laterally of the base and between the upper border of the subscapularis and the anterior border of the supraspinatus is basically the rotator interval. Basically the rotator interval is the space here between the supraspinatus tendon, the anterior border and the subscapularis tendon, the superior border, the base of the coracoid process and here the humeral head. So this is the space uh, through the rotator interval we have the long head of the biceps tendon and the coracohumeral and the superior glenohumeral ligament as we will see in a minute. So we are talking about this space here and here we have the coracohumeral ligament, we have the long head of the biceps tendon, then the superior glenohumeral ligament forming here the biceps pulley system and you can see the ligament it's not really thickened it's how it's supposed to be uh, in the literature some have a cutoff value of three or four millimeters depending on how you measure so this is normal now let's compare this with the 70 year old male patient here this time we have an indirect MR orthography and this is a PD without pet saturation and you can immediately see how different the axillary pouch looks like it's thickened it's hyper intense in signal intensity so this is clearly abnormal this is the sagittal T1 without fat saturation and if we go to the axillary pouch you can see it's hyper intense also on this T1 weighted sequence so it's enhancing and the same is true for the rotator interval we don't have a thin coracohumeral ligament anymore it's all baked together into some ugly mass here uh, it's clearly thickened if you want to measure it and the whole pulley system it's not really depictable and we don't really see any fatty tissue here although with IV gadolinium um, it's not the obliteration or the hypo intense or muscle iso intense changes we see here in the rotator interval but it's enhancement in the rotator interval these are the six signs that uh, were assessed in one of the recent meta-analyses all with good uh, odds ratios and decent sensitivity and specificity we will go through uh, these findings um, here in a minute you can see the coracohumeral ligament thickening, fat obliteration in the rotator interval, rotator wall enhancement, joint capsule enhancement in the axillary joint uh, recess, and then also the glenohumeral ligaments are affected sometimes. A quick thank you to my two newest patrons uh, from last week. This is Betts and Eric. Hi guys, thanks uh, for your support and also thanks to all the other guys. Um, you can find out more about my Patreon campaign in the link down here below. Uh, you have to be careful when you measure the axillary capsule thickness because there are two ways to measure it. Some use both uh, parts of the recess together, like here in this recent publication in 2018, and older publications and even uh, newer ones use the measurements just from one side, either this one or this one. So um, you have to be careful. For, for this one, typically we have a cutoff value of, of 3 to 4 millimeters, and if it's higher, then it might be. Uh, consistent with frozen shoulder and for this one I think it was seven or something like that but I don't I don't really use this this is the second case and it's a 56 year old female patient also PD fat set with indirect MR orthography and immediately you can see that the axillary pouch is abnormal it's thickened uh, in any way you measure it it's hyper intense in signal intensity and we have edema or enhancement all around it as well if you look here on this sagittal T1 and you go to the level of the axillary pouch you can see on this T1 without fat saturation it's still hyper intense so it's enhancing here and the same is true for the rotator interval here between the coracoid base and this anterior coracoid process the subscapularis and supraspinatus here all this here is hyper intense compared to muscle it's not fatty anymore so we have enhancement of the rotator interval here you don't really uh, can appreciate a proper coracohumeral ligament anymore it's probably somewhere around here and if you would want to measure it it's really difficult and it would be thickened anyways 
So this time we have a 60 year old male patient and this was after direct MR arthrography and this is a PD fat set. And this is a nice example as you can see here the axillary recess is not distended like at all and if you look carefully you can also see that it's hyper intense compared to the surrounding muscle tissue. It's clearly thickened all this here it's way too thick the whole axillary recess. And because this was an MR arthrography and the joint capsule was not distending so well, we can see that we have this extravasation along the typical locations or regions here along the scapula and the subscapularis muscle. So this is also a finding that can be consistent with a frozen shoulder. And then on this PD fat set, sagittal, you can see again the edematous changes here around the axillary pouch. And also there is a slight edema in the rotator interval here. And if you look on a T1, this time because we don't have IV gadolinium, there is no enhancement in the rotator interval, but clearly there is no fat anymore as well. So this is the long head of the biceps tendon as you can appreciate here. This is the supraspinatus, subscapularis, coracoid process. And where we should have at least a little bit of fatty tissue, there is all just muscle iso-intense signal stuff going on here. So this is the obliteration of the fatty tissue in the rotator interval, all this here. And as such, there is really, uh, it's really hard to appreciate the coracohumeral ligament. Again here, PD fat set in a patient roughly 80 years of age, and even there was an arthrography as it appears. And we don't have a distension of the axillary recess. It's thickened. You can better see this here on this non-fat saturated sequence. This time we don't have an edema around the axillary recess. And if you have the T1 here, you can quickly check the rotator interval here and no fat anymore. It's all obliterated here. So this is clearly abnormal obliteration of the fatty tissue in the rotator interval and together with the thickening of the axillary pouch it's consistent with a frozen shoulder. And here another patient, 70 years old, male, and this is a PD fat set and it's a MR after IV gadolinium. You have the axillary recess which is clearly thickened, not distended, so these are already two good signs. And now let's have a look at the rotator interval. This is again a T1 without fat saturation. We have here the base, we have our interval and this is the coracohumeral ligament. We have some distension or joint uh, effusion here, so it's not a complete obliteration as we had it beforehand, but look at the coracohumeral ligament here. It's coming from the coracoid process and then inserting up here and it's clearly thickened. And if you want to measure it, you have about four well, depending on where you measure it, uh, three to four millimeters, suggesting that there is a pathology as well, and together with the axillary recess, potentially consistent with a frozen shoulder. As for the nomenclature, um, you can use both terms, frozen shoulder and adhesive capsulitis, although there are some um, societies or uh, committees that advocate frozen shoulder over adhesive capsulitis because of the lack of real adhesions in the joint. However, in the radiology literature you frequently see, especially also in recent years, the use of adhesive capsulitis rather than frozen shoulder. You have to remember that both names or both diagnoses are pretty old, so I think adhesive capsulitis was in the 1940s and the frozen shoulder was initially used by Cotman in 1934, so way before we had MRI. And this is another thing, um, MRI does not make the diagnosis of a frozen shoulder, it's basically a clinical diagnosis and what we can see are findings that are consistent with frozen shoulder in the correct clinical setting. And please don't use the diagnosis periarthritis humeroscapularis because all it does is just make you look smart because you know some Latin words that basically just saying shoulder pain. And with that I'd like to say thank you for watching, hit the like button and also make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, check out my Patreon page and come back next week for the next video. Thank you.